Janik, AI has been the buzz at RSNA for several years now. Taking a step back, where are we? What are the state of affairs in terms of AI in the medical field? Um, it's a good question and the right question um, because today in the market, everybody feels that uh, AI is going to solve a lot of issues with regards to accessibility, um, variability, um, and even the the radiologist's ability to augment uh, and make better decisions. I'm taking a skeptical route to uh, that approach in the market um, because for me, AI is where the internet industry used to be back in 1997. So I think we're in the 1997 of AI um, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, the biggest reason being the validation behind these AI models, which means if you talk to the 100 plus AI companies, almost everybody claiming to do the exact same thing um, and asked him saying, well, what data set did you train your model on? Did somebody validate that model? And most importantly, was that uh, training data heterogeneous, which means representative of multiple hospital systems and multiple uh, vendor systems? The short answer is no, it was not. Most of these AI vendors have still trained on publicly available data sets, which are 10 plus years old and probably just coming from a single vendor like GE or Philips or Siemens, et cetera. So when you make a claim that I trained an FDA approved model on 100 patients using 10 year old data coming from a single vendor system and a single institution, I got a problem with that because I don't want to be uh, diagnosed um, or at least uh, my diagnoses be relied on uh, instruments, in this case, the AI being the instrument, that has uh, limited accuracy and specificity and sensitivity based on the training data out there. And the other big issue with AI models is uh, AI is still a tool. Um, as a tool, you need shelf space to distribute it. Um, distribution causes awareness, awareness causes adoption. And that is a fundamental operating piece that's missing from most of these AI companies. Um, most of these AI companies are not plugged into networks like LifeImage or Quest or Illumina, which means that if you have an AI to detect, detect breast cancer, they should technically be talking to LifeImage because we own the biggest breast cancer imaging traffic in the United States. But the fact that they are not A, not aware that they need to even distribute the AI and B, Every AI company feels that they're going to build their own network, going to make their own individual sale to a hospital system, um, is very unrealistic. And that's exactly what happened between 97 and 2000 before the internet crash. How do we break through that hubris then? Um, I think the, the perception and the notion from the tech community, both in the Bay Area as well as in Boston, that uh, you can throw $100 million at building an AI company, get FDA approval, get the European Union approval, and uh, things are gonna be great is unrealistic. Um, there needs to be a tremendous amount of education from RSNA, from HIMSS, and from other uh, peer-reviewed organizations such as ACR. Um, and specifically educating that adoption is not based just on accuracy, adoption is based on a pattern. Adoption is based on feedback coming back from radiologists and physicians and patients. That piece is missing today, number one. Number two, um, I think we as uh, network vendors and network operators need to kind of increase the velocity, frequency, and veracity of educating the broader industry, both in the provider as well as the pharma space, and, and indicate saying this is how actually AI distribution is gonna work. And most importantly, I would say, is we need a unified approach on the validation exercise. There is no uh, central body which is peer reviewed that indicates that if you're detecting cancer in breast, that this is the data set you need, this is the phenotypical data that you need, and these, these are the genetic biomarkers you need to consider before you make a diagnostic claim. That body does not exist today. Now, whether it's a nonprofit driven by RSNA or whether it's in collaboration with the industry, we will have to figure it out. But the lack thereof is causing further fragmentation, 
confusion, and it's potentially contributing to patient safety events, which people should be aware of. Discuss Life Images solution set to help validate and provide more robust heterogeneous data um, to AI companies, in addition, in coupled with the network model. So, if you break down the core components of what makes an AI company successful, um, the notion that accuracy is what AI, AI makes a successful business model, according to me, is not right. I think what makes any AI company successful is adoption and continuous validation based on real-world evidence data sets, which means that when you think about feeding an AI with uh, data to train the model, it's not a point-in-time solution, rather it's need to be a living data set that continuously feeds the model from real-world evidence across heterogeneous partners, vendors as well as hospital systems, um, to kind of train that model to a point where it's industrialized. Currently, it's not industrialized. That translates into three very distinct capabilities that Life Image is bringing to the table. Number one is the data asset. So over the last several years, Life Image has been working hard at bringing novel data assets uh, to the market, both for uh, pharma companies as well as for research informatics and as well as for AI companies uh, to mature the evidence lifecycle, number one. Number two, um, Life Image is a network, which means that we have the plumbing and the pipes across all the clinical endpoints, across the workflows, whether it's primary care, whether it's uh, specialty, or whether it's inpatient, whether it's ED, whether it's independent imaging centers, what have you, which means that if you're an AI company, and if you want to scale to 100 hospitals, 1,000 hospitals, 2,000 hospitals, Life Image is able to facilitate that today based on our distribution uh, process and distribution framework for AI companies. And by the way, we are already doing that across almost half a dozen AI companies. Um, stroke being one of them, um, you know, mammograms, breast cancer detection being the second one, and so on. And the third and the most important piece uh, we, where we are assisting AI companies is the validation piece. Most of the questions that we are getting from the industry today uh, is, are, is around, um, do you have heterogeneous data for us to make improve or mature our arguments with the FDA. Or I'm already an FDA approved organization as an AI company, and I'm trying to essentially extend uh, my adoption and provide uh, better arguments for the medical community, uh, by virtue of which I need more data, to, more representative data to train the model. So those are three core areas where Life Image is already engaged, both in US as well as in Europe. All right, thank you. Thank you.